Hey everybody, Fun Stanford's journey coach Janice Whiting. I am your uh, executive manager, coach number 33. And in this video, I am continuing a series that I have decided to call the Buffalo Plaid or quote unquote flannel life series. Uh, reason being is because I am currently in love with our flannel life stamp set and I am searching and searching uh, for it right here, flannel life stamp set. Pretty basic background stamp, but I have loved creating with it. I've created like four cards, I think, with it. But today I'm keeping it very clean and simple. Um, you might have seen my last video, which I created this super easy, super clean and simple card with this little stripe right here of the buffalo plaid. And I just recently found out that this was called buffalo plaid. Hmm, so if you didn't know that, now you're learning something. Uh, they're specifically the red and white checkers um, or plaid, I guess. Uh, anyway. So I created this card, super fun and easy, and then I created three more. One of them I cannot show you because it is part of my Coach Collective series. So if you wanna know how um, what that card looks like and what 11 other beautiful projects for Christmas looks like, then go to my blog, uh, www.janiscreates.com and click on the tab that says Coach Collective. It is basically uh, 12 of us Fun State Bruce Journey coaches that got together um, and create awesome projects every month and we have full color instructions on how to create them and it's basically like inspiration and a nice little pdf and it's fifteen dollars a month um and you can buy one month or you can buy each month it comes out or you don't have to buy it all but if you did um all the info there is on the blog okay and we have a new one coming out december 1st so they come out every month and we started this in september so there are three months already out um anyway so i can't show you that project but I'll show you some of the other ones that I've made. So um, my most recent one I made today, again, my kind of goal is clean and simple. So cards that will take you like no time to recreate um, and you can make multiples of them. So this is my next one. <laughs> Look, I know, gosh, that, I don't, there we go. If I put a little bit of um, shadow over this, maybe you can see that card a little bit better without so much of the brightness coming at you. But anyway, it is very simple. It is as simple as it looks. And maybe when I uh, switch views, you could see it a little bit better. Um, but you'll notice it's got the um, little pierced border all the way around it. And it's got that sparkle washi tape to add a little pizzazz to it. And then that awesome snowflake that has sparkle cuts on it. Um, and of course the focus is the buffalo plaid tree. Isn't that fun? And then just believe it's a super, super simple. You can knock this out in no time and hopefully um, it'll provide some fun inspiration for you. And a little sneak peek to the next one I'm gonna make uh, video what it, it is. Anyway, <laughs> ah, so fun, buffalo plaid, amazing poinsettia. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera view and show you how to recreate this super easy but fun uh, Christmas card. All right, you ready? Here we go. Okay, so here is the card. A little bit of a, a more flat view. So view from top down, so you can maybe see a little bit better. It is a regular A2 size, so it's four and a quarter by five and a half down. You can see the beautiful sparkle. Of course, our flannel little pieces and the believe. So it's super, super, super easy. You're gonna start with a regular size uh, card base. And to create this really cool outline, um, we are using a set called Journey Rectangles. And this Journey Rectangle, oh, sorry about that glare. Um, Journey Rectangles uh, set has 12 dies. Six of them are cutting and six of them are what we call piercing elements. And I have talked about these before. Um, I'll go ahead and grab these out here you will see that on the ones that are so-called piercing elements, they have those little dots, okay? And instead of cu uh, cutting a straight line, they basically just pierce dots in a nice straight line. So kind of cool. We used to do these with a little piercing tool by hand. Do y'all remember that? <laughs> I remember I did it. Um, so I just wanna show you real quick how it's done. So I'm gonna move this out of the way. And I want to just pierce the top part, not the bottom. So I'm gonna open up that card base. And I'm going to center this right along this piece here. Um, and 
I am going to use some um, washi tape to keep it in place so it does not shift or shimmy on me. And then I'm going to use my Amaze machine. I'm going to bring it over. And um, I don't know if you guys know, but a Fun Staper Journey is having a Black Friday sale and the Amaze machine is uh, going to be on sale from Friday through Cyber Monday for $75. Quite awesome. So if you do not have a die cutting machine and you are wanting to get um, started, this is a great one. Of course, you're just seeing the corner of mine, but it's super, super easy. I just created that sandwich that you saw and now I'm just going to basically crank it through. There we go. We will see it run through, and then when we're done, I will take it out and I will show you the finished product. So it is super awesome. Now, again, if you're not familiar with dies, some of them are for cutting out shapes, and like this one, it is just for adding detail. Now, if it doesn't come through all the way, like uh, it looks like it's missed a few, I just come back and I will run a pair of scissors or something sharp there along the back. And that usually picks up uh, any of the parts that didn't um, go all the way through, like maybe here. There we go. And you can start seeing that. Basically, just little pieces that didn't come, in, uh, come uh, through the die. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and get that all the way out. And now our card base is ready to roll. That's so fun. And of course we have lots of different dies that have this uh, piercing element uh, piece to it. All right, next thing, uh, super, super easy. Um, and actually I'm just gonna go ahead and take you through all the steps, okay? So I wanna get all of our pieces out. Um, the next thing is um, a die that I use to create this beautiful snowflake piece. And that is this die right here. It is a steel roll die. Okay, it's much thicker than a regular die. So this is, you can tell obviously the difference. Um, they're bigger and you can, you can use these with our maze machine, which is what I use to cut mine out of. And so these are the pictures of what this die has. And I use that beautiful snowflake which I have already done, of course, and I've cut it out of my whipped cream paper. So the awesome thing about steel rule dies is that you can cut multiples at one time. So I could run four or five pieces of cardstock through here and up to eight layers of different types of media um, and cut through a very cleanly with these dies. They are awesome, okay? They are a little bit pricier because of that, but you kind of get more bang for your buck. Um, the next thing you will need is the sentiment piece, which I chose, believe, from our uh, holiday script stamp set, and I love these. I have used these just flat on cards or as shown on this card, which is stamped and then die cut out. Um, and I've already gone ahead and done that for us. So I just stamped it and then the die fits right perfectly around it, send it through the machine and you've got this beautiful piece you can kind of add as um, an embellishment. All right, uh, now the piece de resistance, of course my favorite is the flannel plaid. Um, which I have already stamped and die cut, but I do wanna go ahead and show you the process of how I got to this, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and bring over my stamping tool. I gotta love my stamping tool. Someday we will have one of our own, but until then, this is what I got. Uh, and I'm gonna move this over here so it's not quite in the, um, the light there. So you're gonna start off with a piece of our Cranberry Bliss, and I cut it to four and a quarter by, basically the size of a card front, right? So four and a quarter by five and a half. And we're gonna put that right here. And actually, because I'm using a um, full-size sheet and a background stamp, I'm just using a couple of pieces of tape to adhere it, or for it, to, you know, for it not to move. Because the magnets, if I use the magnets, they'll be in the way, and I won't be able to get a full, um, stamped image, which is what I want. So I'm just going to align that right there. And then I'm going to stamp, take my beautiful stamp. Love it. I actually didn't clean it from the last time because I'm like, I'm going to use it again. Why do I clean it? And I'm just going to arrange it literally right up on top. Just kind of align it as best as you can. And then stick it down. 
And to create that pattern, I'm going to use our black licorice ink. And the reason why I'm using our stamp tool is because um, this is such a wide surface that it'll take me a couple of times to get that perfect um, solid print that I want. If you're familiar with stamping, you know it takes a little while. I say a little while, just a couple of um, impressions before it makes it nice and solid when you've got such a large stamp. So there's one. Oh, I love it. Don't you love it? I love it. Um, so I recently learned that this is called Buffalo plaid. Um, I had no idea. I was just always calling it black and white flannel. <laughs> That's the name of the stamp set is flannel life. But I was doing some research on just this and because I was seeing this in home decor all over everywhere uh, and I was um, I don't know what I typed on Google but anyway it come, came up as buffalo plaid and I was like oh good to know that I found out the actual official uh, name of this print okay maybe just one more time I mean it's pretty good but just for the sake of getting it as dark as I possibly can sometimes I can be a little anal it obviously looks pretty good but We'll do it one more time. And then, beautiful. All right, we're gonna call that done. And just kind of gently, I just used some really low tech scotch tape. Um, but anyway, there it is. Isn't that so fun? Yes, I love it. It is, again, like I said, one of uh, my latest obsessions is buffalo plaid, and I've gotten a shirt out of it. I bought a coffee mug in buffalo plaid. <laughs> there was a pillow that I wanted, and now I'm making greeting cards out of it. Okay, so this is how you would create your piece, and like I said, I have done four cards um, using this, and my inspiration was I've got a piece this big. How can I use up as much as I wanted of this as I possibly could to create a card? And so one of those ideas was to cut these three little pieces and make them into a little Christmas tree. Um, and the sizes on those, then grab it here. So the smallest little guy is, um, so the, the width of everything is three fourths of an inch. So just kind of trim your, your piece lengthwise in three fourths of an inch. And then from there, it's one and one eighth long. So an inch and one and one eighth. And then the longest one was, or just kidding, this the medium one is one and uh, three quarters long. And then the longest one, I believe it's three and three sixteenth, excuse me, uh, three and three eighths long. All right, so three inches and three eighths long. All right, so one and an eighth, uh, one and three quarters and three and three eighths long. All right, and the width is three uh, three quarters on all those. Okay, so those your that's your little piece there, your little Christmas tree, uh, quote unquote branches. I know it's not typical, but I wanted something just a little different, but still fun. So I've got all these pieces, and really the only thing left to do is to make this nice and sparkly, which I normally do at the end. But because I'm going to be like my one of my techniques is to be pressing down onto it for it to stick, I'm actually going to bring out a. Um, my non-stick mat here and put this right up on top. We are going to be using our Journey Glaze, which is super awesome. It is a glaze and resin mixture. You guys, if you have watched any of my videos, you know that I use this quite often. It is one of, one of my favorite products. I would say one of my top five must-haves um, um, of our Fun Stampers Journey products. And basically, I'm going to cover all of this completely, and then I'm going to, basically, I'm using it like a glue. And the awesome thing about it is that it will dry clear, it will not crack, it will not tarnish, it will not turn yellow, it is flexible. So you can use it, and I am almost all out, so let's see if I'll get any here. If not, I will grab myself a new one because I keep these highly in stock because I use them so often. And you can tell this one's kind of beat up a little bit. <laughs> 
I should be nicer to my journey glazes. Let me see if I can speed the process up by just snipping that right there. Oh, I definitely sped it up. All right, that's way more than I need, so I'm just gonna move it around. I don't, so the awesome thing about the glaze is that you can use it as, um, like I said, as a little, um, as an adhesive or as a decorative element. So if you're uh, if you're familiar with the product Glossy Accents, it's kind of like that, except for it's a, obviously it's a different formulation, but it has the same kind of effect. You can add and make things look like enamel. You can make things look like it's wet by adding wing drops. There's there's a gazillion different techniques you can use with this glaze. All right, and I didn't want too much, and I am purposely not putting it all the way down because I'm going to be um, putting our sparkle cuts over it. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so I can see a little bit better. Okay, so I'm bringing in our sparkle cuts and our sparkle cuts are basically a thicker, chunkier cut glitter. And they are intended, if you think, they, they are translucent, but it does have some uh, fun colors in there. So it's, that's purposeful. It's not 100% clearer, but it is mostly. Okay, it's, it's intended to have just a little bit of sparkle. Now see what I'm doing? I'm pressing down into that glaze because I'm wanting the sparkle cuts to basically take over. So I'm actually gonna take this and I'm gonna turn it upside down and then just kind of press down all over it. I wanted it to be a chunky, a chunky, chunky, I was about to say chunky monkey, but chunky um, snowflake. Whoa, so pretty. Exactly what I wanted, okay? All right, so I'm going to take this. I'm going to zoom back out. There we go. I'm going to take this and move it over. We'll give it a second to dry because I've got all my pieces. I believe I got all my pieces ready uh, for assembly now that I've, that I've finished with the snowflake. And basically, we're just gonna assemble now. We're gonna take those pieces and put them right where they need to be. So we've got the card base and we are going to take some of our black sparkle tape, which I've got them in my nifty difty, uh, little handy dandy uh, washi tape um, dispenser. Actually, these come in a group of three. I've got a whole stack right over here. Actually, I've got a, quite a few of those. Um, because I've got so many brands of washi, not brands, so many different colors of washi. Um, I'll actually go ahead and show you. This is another one and it basically stacks. So I've got three, I've got six of them and they just stack up nice and neat and they're really handy because then if I only just, if I only want the one, I'll just pull the one out and put the others right back in the stack on top of my desk. So kind of neat. All right, but back to the card. Uh, the washi tape piece of black, uh, black licorice is gonna be about three and three fourths um, of a strip. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can cut that. Oh, a little too much there, Janice, a little too much. Three and three fourths, I've got about like that. It's got a nice little um, jagged edge there like a regular tape dispenser would have. And you're gonna take this little strip and you are going to put it right down the middle towards the bottom of your card. So center, bottom center. And just make sure that it's nice and straight or as straight as you can get it. I'm sure it doesn't matter too much. And then I actually take my Detail Pro Shears and I trim those edges because it has that, um, you know, that little zigzaggy end to it. All right. And then I'm gonna take my three little pieces of Buffalo Plaid or Flannel Life and using my uh, medium foam squares, we're going to put some of these on the back. I think I just did one for the medium, one for the small, and I did two for this large piece. And then you're gonna take the backings off and just put them on. And I know some of you guys are very, very specific with um, measurements. So let me go ahead and give you the exact measurements. It's about an, uh, one, and an, one and a quarter inch from the bottom is where you would place it. So about right there or so. I'm not, I'm, I'm not always so specific, but I kind of eyeball things a lot. 
but I know you guys appreciate measurements, so there we go. Okay, now I did, when I first made this, I did consider like doing them wonky, which I thought that would be cute too. So if you want them wonky, do them wonky, because that would be fun. All right, so um, as far as spacing on this, it's a little, it's like what, um, maybe 3 sixteenths or so on the spacing. I just tried to make it even. I didn't worry so much about it being perfect. Okay, so we've got our tree. Then I'm gonna take the, um, the die cut sentiment and this one I actually came and grabbed our small little squares, foam squares. It helps me from having to cut them down to size except for I do cut one of them um, right in half because it's perfect. This is the perfect width for the tail of the die cut. So I'll go ahead and stick that there. Then take the backs off and put it right up on top. Guys, this is like one of the quickest cards you will ever make with the exception of um, putting the sparkle cuts on them. Super, super quick and easy. Okay, so he's gonna go right in the middle, right across. I always try to center it as best as I can, but it's got a, a it's weighted heavy on the left, so it may, I moved it over a little bit just to kind of balance that out a little bit. And then the last piece, I use one of our um, medium foam squares to adhere this gorgeous snowflake. And it kind of makes my card. And I put it right there, right up on top. Da 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 da. Da da. Okay, that's it. Super, super simple. The easiest card you will ever make um, with just a little bit of mist to make that beautiful sparkly uh, snowflake. Super, super quick and easy. Incorporating that fun, beautiful buffalo plaid uh, print. Again, the uh, stamp set hero is Flannel Life. Flannel Life, which is what I am creating cards with nowadays. And the holiday script set with some yellow washi tape on there um, that I'm using for the scripts as well. So I hope you loved it. If you love it and you want this stamp set yourself, then go visit my online store, which is www.funstampersjourney.com forward slash Janice Whiting and shop like you would any online store. Um, we are having a Black Friday sale this Friday, two days from now, uh, where our Amaze Machine, which is what I showcased uh, in this uh, when I created that, um, the little piercing element rectangle is gonna be on sale for $75. And I think I forgot to mention, but our journey glaze and adhesives are going on sale for 20% off during this Black Friday sale. So take advantage, uh, stock up on your favorite adhesives because they will all be on 20% 20, uh, 20 off during the weekend, starting with Black Friday through Cyber Monday. All right, I think that's it. Stay tuned for the next card video which I'm showing which is why I pulled out these sprigs uh, I'm sorry it was a preview it was a preview think of it as a preview um, and I will show you how I create this next all right thanks so much for stopping by and we will see you soon bye